Now, let's talk about the intermediate stuff. What's up, YouTube? So part two of this video is going to be rather different because I'm gonna take you to Morph Market. We're gonna look at some calculators and you're probably like, oh my God, he's gonna use the tool. Yes, it's easier for me to use the tool. It gives you the exact percentages of the item, of the possibilities that you're gonna get. It gives you the exact outcomes of the possibilities and you can put in exactly what the parents are. So yes, why wouldn't I use a tool? So Morph Market has this calculator and these, this is a genetics calculator. And all you have to do is put in the parents' information. So what are the parents? Het trans, visual trans, het hypo, visual hypo, het zero, visual zero, yada, yada, yada. You put all that in there. Are they leatherback, dunner, blue bar, tiger? You can put polygenic traits in there. You can put recessive traits in there, dominant and complete dominant, whatever. You can put anything you want in there. Spews out all of the different possibilities based off your pairing. Now, the good and the bad thing about Morph Market is that it has genetic stripe as a incomplete dominant, which is, it, like I said, it's not, so they need to update that. They do have blue bar as a, a polygenic. They do have color in there. So if you do add color in there, uh, polygenic. So whenever those outcomes come, it's going to say possible uh, blue bar possible. So it's not, you're, you're not going to know. So if I, if I were you in the calculator, I would not put any polygenic traits, um, or I would not put any color in there and I would not put blue bar in there. Anything polygenic is always going to say pos on the, the calculator, which is incorrect. So you'll just know based off when the babies come out, but we're looking at the individual morphs and how they're going to look or not how they look but how they're gonna, uh, what, uh, what outcomes you're gonna get from the morphs that you're breeding. So let's go with one of my pairings. Well, uh, what is this, which pair am I using? All right, a red, I haven't paired him yet. <sighs> if you didn't watch the first part, I just woke up. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you guys are going to be like, damn, he dropped three videos in one day? Possibly. Uh, red, hypo, trans, leatherback, gunner to a red, hypo, het, translucent female. Again, we're not going to put red in there because red is going to pop out different things, pos reds and all that. We don't need all that. We know, us watching me re recording, that this is a red pairing. So it's going to give you the outcomes. And the outcomes in this case, you'll notice that everything is going to be hypo because that's how it works. Breeding two recessive together, two copies on one end and two copies on the other end. Both of the parents spit out one copy in the egg, right? In the genetics and the DNA, which means every, so they're getting one copy from here and one copy from here and it's going into the egg. So that means every egg has two copies. Capiche? Got it. So every egg is going to be a hypo. Translucent, you're getting two copies from the dad, one copy from the mom because she's het translucent. So what happens is, so the mom doesn't have a copy necessarily when it comes to het translucent that she passes on to her parent, on to her offspring. However, Right. So they're not getting one copy directly from the mom. They're getting one copy directly from the dad. So everything is going to be het translucent. However, because the mom is still het translucent, there's going to be a very small percentage. Right. How many times does one go into two? 50 percent. Half the time. That means there's going to be a percentage of translucent babies in there because the mom still has the morph. She carries. The dad is a visual morph. That means one into two, everything is going to come out. Or not everything. Half of everything is going to be translucent. The other half is going to be het translucent. This is pretty simple because now you know everything's going to be translucent because the dad passed off the one more one one copy to every egg, and the mom passed one copy to half the eggs. So essentially, half of them will be translucent, half of them will be het translucent. 
The dog is barking. Hey, quiet. Come here. Come here. Come here. How many times you gotta say come here? Like, come on. Where was I? All right, one copy from the dad to every baby, one copy from the mom to half the babies. So now we get it. He's crazy. Yes, the air smells like a bunch of freaking animals. Okay, calm down. Um, but <laughs> now that's the typical situation when you have a visual trans visual of a recessive to a het of a recessive. Let's talk about het to het before we go any further. Before we go any further, het to het means that you have one copy, one copy. All right, so I'm gonna do this in the calculator real quick and say that the dad is a het translucent instead of a visual translucent. What you'll notice is you only have 25% of the babies being visual translucent. Then you have 75% of the babies being possibly het translucent. Because when you have one copy from the dad and one copy from the mom, what you get is 50% drop rate from the mom and 50% drop rate from the dad, the overlap of 50 to 50 is 25%. Then we have 75% of the babies that end up not being visual translucent. And because the overlap is 50-50 and 25% is already taken over, we have 75% left, right? But the overlap was 50-50. So we have 25% of the dad side left and 25% of the mom sides left. So actually I should probably get a dry erase board. I'm gonna draw this out into a sketch, right? Um, but essentially let's do a, a, a square. We got a square here and a square here. You overlap that 50, 50, what you get is 25% in the middle and you get 25% on the outside, 25% on the outside. So what happens is because there's 75% of the babies left, 25% of those babies from the dad side and the mom side are going to be het translucent. So that leaves you with 25% because they're not going to be het translucent. We already have 75% of the offspring taken into consideration. 25% are visual, 25% are het from the mom, 25% are het from the dad. That leaves 25% in the middle that are not het translucent whatsoever. That is where the 66% comes in because there's no way for us to know which one is het translucent, het hypo, het zero, het blah, blah, blah. So when you put that into a diagram, out of 100%, 75% taken over, 25% left, but we're eliminating the 25% that's visual translucent because they do not count in this case, which leaves 25% out of 75%, which is one third is not het translucent which means there's a 66% possibility that they are all head translucent. And I know you're probably wondering, well, how does that come about? Why do you say 66% instead of 75%, instead of 25%? Because that's not how it works. We already eliminated, remember, we eliminated the 25% that are visual translucent, right? So that leaves out of 100%, if we take away 25%, that leaves 75%. And out of the 100%, 50% of them are going to be het translucent. 25% are going to be not het translucent. So out of the 75% that we have left, because we took out the 25% of visual translucent, out of the 75% that we have left, 25% are not het translucent, 50% are het translucent. You put that into a calculator. What is 50 out of 75? That is two thirds. That is 66.6666667, okay? Because you always have to round up the last decimal point. Um, so yeah, 66%. That is the outcome of het translucent. And that's where you see the 66% in the calculator. I know that was a long way of explaining it, but this is the intermediate video. At this point, if you're listening to this, it's because you really, really want to know about breeding bearded dragons. Really, really want to know about breeding bearded dragons. So let's go back to hypotrans, uh, leatherback donor to hypohetrans. Let's go back to that calculator. What you get is you get 
Hypos in every baby. Now we have leatherback and dunner. How does that work? Because leatherback and dunner are technically dominant morphs. Half of the offspring are going to be dunner. Half the offspring are going to be leatherback. Again, with the overlap, that means 25% of the offspring are going to be hypo, leatherback, dunner. That is the overlap there. So that means 50% are leatherback, 50% are dunner. Overlap 25%, we have hypo, leather, dunners. So 25% chance to get one of those, 25% chance to get a hypo leatherback done or hypo leatherback, 25% to get a hypo dunner, and then you know 25% to get a hypo because of the morphs. Then we had we add translucent in there. Translucent makes things different because now half the babies are going to be translucent, half the babies are going to be not are going to be het translucent. So what we got to do now is we got to add all that in. So 50% of everything is going to be added on top. Right now, we are at 25% because we haven't added the translucent in. Now we add 50% of that. So now everything's going to be one eighth, right? Everything's going to be one eighth because different possibilities. You got a one eighth chance for a hypo trans leather back dunner. You got a one eighth chance for a hypo leather dunner head translucent. You got a one eighth chance for a hypo leather translucent. Um, then you got a, yeah. Then you got a one eighth chance for a hypo trans dunner. Then you got a one eighth chance for a hypo leather head trans. You got a one eighth chance. You get the gist. Because every time you add a new morph, a new complexity to it, the, it changes everything. It's half, it's 25%, whatever the, the case may be based off your, your combinations. Anytime it's dominant and incomplete dominant, it's always going to be 50%. Unless it's a super, it's going to be 100% of the offspring. So let's talk about super. Who's, who's drinking this much? The rats are... Uh, what's up, Olive? What do you think about those things? Yeah. See, when you get yourself a dog, make sure you get yourself a dog that barks at the wind. But when you ask her to come in, she just lays down. Okay, make sure you get... <laughs> All right. Um, you know what? That's a funny thing. That's just a funny segue. I actually just partnered up with a vet service, an online vet service, because as you all know, with reptiles, there is a very slim population of vets out there that know about reptiles. So I partnered up with this vet service. It's called Vetster and it's an online consultation. Obviously they can't do, you know, x-rays and you do complex stuff like that, that requires in-person visits. But most of these vets can diagnose stuff from a distance just by talking about what's going on, talking about the, the symptoms that are just being displayed and they can prescribe medication. So if you are in a situation where you do not have a vet near you or you do not have a reptile vet near you, go in the first link down in the description below. It's Vetster and they essentially can help you out with anything that you may have in terms of, you know, taking care of your reptiles, even your dogs, even your cats, whatever you got. Go check it out. Um, I think it's a pretty good deal for what you're getting, right? You're getting someone that knows about animals that you have. You're getting someone that can help you prescribe you medication and figure things out without you having to leave the comfort of your home. I think that's a pretty sweet deal in my opinion. Again, it's Vetster. Go down in the link, uh, the first link in the description and go see what you got. Go see what, what I'm talking about. Um, so there you go. You guys are, oh my God, he's done did it. He done partnered up with somebody. I mean, it's a partnership, but I haven't earned nothing yet, okay? I wish. I wish they were like, here's some moolah for you to tell people about us. That's not how it works every time, unless you're like really big. Uh, first, you got to sign up for it. Then you got to tell them, this is what I got. Then they got to approve it. And then they got to say, well, go tell people about us. And then we'll give you something based off if you get anybody to come hang out with us. That's how that works. Um, there's a few other people that I'm considering. I'm still trying to get... So so the problem, I know I mentioned this in a few videos, the problem with uh, BetterHelp and all those therapy, online therapy services, they require, like for the affiliate program, for the partnerships, they require a lot of followers, a lot of, you know, social media out, you know, outreach or whatever. So I have not been able to, because I, if you go to my Instagram, my Facebook and all that, I have less than 2000 on everything because nobody, 
I, I don't, I'm not a social media person. Okay. I don't, I could care less. I like making videos. I make more videos than I do posts on Instagram and Facebook. So there you go. Um, so there you go. Where was I? So we were talking about the outcomes and everything, uh, but essentially anytime you have a dominant or incomplete dominant, it's always going to be 50%. And unless you have a super, then it's going to be a hundred percent of the offspring are going to carry that morph. And then if you have a recessive, it's a, if it's het to visual, then a 50% of the babies are going to be het. 50% of the babies are going to be visual. If it's het to het, 25% of the babies are going to be uh, visual. And the other 75% are not going to be het according to the calculations, right? Because they're going to be 66% het. So you can't say they're het because you have to say they're 66% het. Um, and then that's it. That's where it stops. So if you see anyone ever trying to sell you something that's 33%, that's not how it works, okay? The only way is 100%, 66%, and then there's 50%, which is a, a separate situation, which I'll explain when we get to the expert video, uh, a separate situation there because 50% uh, only really matters when you're trying to sell something, not so much when you're trying to buy something. Um, unless you're a person trying to buy something that's 50% and you're trying to figure out what that means because you want to get into breeding. Go watch the expert video. Um, so 100%, 66%, those are the only two things that matter when you're talking about breeding outcomes, unless you're talking about 50%, which is when you you know go from breeding one that's recessive and one that's not, and then you get 50%. After that, there's nothing. No 33%, no 25%. People do that whenever they have a 50% that doesn't prove out. They'll be like, oh, it's 25%. Not a chance, okay? Not a chance. 25% doesn't work. There's not a chance. If you, out of 20 babies, did not hit one of those morphs, not a chance. Same thing goes for 33%. You have a 66% that doesn't prove out, not a chance, okay? All right. And um, if you made this far into the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything that I put out in the future. As always, peace.